Cameroon reiterates its collaboration with BRICS nations for a more balanced and equitable development in the world. Prime Minister Joseph John Gote took to the rostrum at the summit in Johannesburg today and have highlights in this edition. Government evaluates a 160 billion safe France illegal transaction linked to cryptocurrency and Ponzi schemes that found that fund terrorism. How can a Cameroonian avoid illegal financial flow? Find out in the 7:30 edition. Heated debates dominate Sunday radio and TV programs in Cameroon with the respect of media ethics posing a serious problem. Tonight, we zoom in on what media professionals make of the efforts and to the choice of guests. And those are top stories. Thanks for joining us on this edition of the 730 News. I'm Gladys Tata. Leaders of the BRICS bloc and those invited to the 15th BRICS summit have reiterated the need for emerging countries to combine efforts towards a more balanced and equitable development in the world. This was the dominant call during the BRICS Africa Outreach and Leadership Session, which took place today in the presence of Prime Minister Joseph John Gute. A special envoy uh, to Johannesburg, Christian Che Atam, says major decisions concerning BRICS memberships were announced. The final day of deliberations at the 15th BRICS Summit opened with a press briefing by the five leaders of the organization. They announced the adoption of the second Johannesburg Declaration, which amongst other things, admits six new members into the organization, beginning January 2024. The new members are Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates. The BRICS leaders also indicated their commitment to alternative forms of international payment, noting that finance ministers of the organization have been tasked with exploring the possibilities and reporting during the next summit. The third and final day of BRICS 2023, dedicated to the Africa Outreach Session, also featured repeated calls for the creation of better conditions and more equitable opportunities for countries of Africa and the Global South in general. From the UN Secretary General through the representatives of regional organizations to the different heads of state, about 65 of them, there was consensus that Africa is the abandoned child of the international financial and economic system. The leaders called for adequate measures to be taken to make things right. They equally called for greater collaboration amongst countries of the global south to help reverse the situation. The deliberations mark the end of the 15th summit of BRICS countries, organized in Johannesburg, South Africa. Members of the organization have once more reaffirmed their commitment to keep pushing for better conditions which will help create a just and equitable business environment in favor of countries of the greater south. President Paul Bia's representative at the summit delivered a five-minute speech which he started by recalling that Cameroon enjoys excellent bilateral relations with all BRICS countries before explaining measures the government of Cameroon is putting in place to implement international instruments. Here's the Prime Minister of Government, Joseph John Gute, addressing the heads of state and governments during the session. Our world is currently facing many challenges including amongst others, insecurity, terrorism, climate change, cybercrime, the militarization of space, and the malicious use of social media. Faced with these global challenges, the hopes and expectations of our people continue to grow. Individually, countries are finding it difficult to respond promptly and adequately. To this end, Cameroon welcomes and appreciates the various initiatives under discussion for the development of the African continent and for the drive towards a fairer, more united, and more equitable world. This vision of the world is in line with that of Cameroon, based on the commitment to inclusive multilateralism, respect for the sovereignty of states, and other principles of peaceful coexistence in the quest for shared growth and co prosperity. Your Excellencies, Heads of States and Government, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, 
Under the leadership of the head of state, His Excellency Probia, Cameroon is actively engaged in this path. In fact, Cameroon has embarked on a vigorous plan to implement the SDGs and the Agenda 2063 through the adoption of a national development strategy designed to make Cameroon an emerging country by 2035. For example, Cameroon is one of the pioneers in the implementation of the agreement on the African continental free trade area. In addition, Cameroon, in conjunction with other members of the Congo Basin Forest, which is one of the forest lungs of the world, is working actively to find solutions to climate change. That was Prime Minister Joseph Dangote in Johannesburg after the session. Terrorists and fake investors operating under Ponzi schemes carried out illegal cryptocurrency transactions estimated at over 160 billion safety francs in Cameroon in 2018. The study conducted by the Ministry of Finance in partnership with the Ministry of Justice and the National Agency for Financial Crimes Investigations reveals that Cameroonians still need to be educated to avoid falling prey to Ponzi schemes and terrorism funding. Details with Beatrice Ngom. You have the money, but it's not in your account. The proposed products through digital platforms, you sell them, yet no actual cash flow is being produced. This is how the Ponzi scheme works according to experts from the Ministry of Finance. If you have a deposit of like one million and then the proposal is uh, you have an income of two million after one or two weeks, this is just incredible and it's not reasonable. The results of a study presented on the development of cryptocurrency and activities based on the Ponzi system in Cameroon suggest that such fraudulent investment scams are risky adventures for individuals who engage in them. The studies uh, gave all the opportunity to, to sensitize all the, the citizens to know what are the dangers uh, we can encounter when using those crypto or currencies. Cameroon's Ministry of Finance and the National Agency for Financial Investigation through the study is discouraging Cameroonians from investing in such digital currency schemes. The number of Cameroonians falling prey to individuals promising to make them rich has been increasing in Cameroon in recent years. What many of the people who are lured to such activities do not know is that they are victims of a scheme known as Ponzi. What actually are Ponzi schemes and how do they operate? Clarice Aritakan has been finding out for the 7.30 News. Robbing Peter to pay Paul, who in turn may have been lured into a supposedly legit business which will get him a quick return on his investment with little or no risk. The mathematics of the deal is quite simple. Existing investors are paid with funds collected from unsuspicious new recruits. Ponzi, pyramid scheme or chain referral scams have been around for ages. The red lights are many. The scamming system which uh, are sometimes put in place to get benefits from subscri that subscri subscribers. Marketing and investment frauds have left many penniless worldwide. In Cameroon, the hopes of numerous inhabitants have been dashed to the ground after their involvement with some online trading platforms exposed the loopholes in their get-rich-quick scheme. You can admit your own bank history background and then um, look out for the storytelling. When was it created? What have they done so far? Where are they? Who are the people involved? If you don't know anything in financing, you know, uh, in, in anything in the financial system, don't get involved. However, it is not all networking businesses that are Ponzi, experts stress. If you have a product that you sell, then you, if you sell the product, you have about, you know, a profit. Those kind of business do at times work. The government should insist that uh, all these guys who have this program of also to register companies. We don't have a regulation environment. While many are encouraged not to put all their revenue-making eggs in one basket, economists insist 
Caution is nevertheless highly recommended when parting with money on the basis of I did it and it worked. Because, as the saying goes, there is no free lunch. The head of the European Union says the EU remains committed in fighting hate speech and misinformation in Cameroon. Philip Van Dam was speaking today shortly after an audience with Communication Minister René Manuel Sadi. Charles Ebune covered the event and has the details. 1 p.m. in Brussels, the headquarters of the European Union, midday in Yaoundé, Cameroon today. The ambassador head of the European Union delegation to Cameroon enters the Ministry of Communication for his farewell audience with Communications Minister René Emmanuel Sadi. For over two and a half years, the European Union ambassador to Cameroon, Philippe Van Damme, has been strengthening cooperation between Cameroon and the European Union, especially in the domain of communication. I had the pleasure of, uh, of having an excellent collaboration with the Ministry of Communication of the last couple of years, notably in the fight against disinformation and, and hate speech. With Minister René Emmanuel Sadi, they discussed the bond of cooperation between Cameroon and the European Union, especially in the fight against misinformation, a campaign which the European Union has been leading in Cameroon. I thought it was appropriate at the end of my mission indeed to, to um, have a kind of state of play uh, to see where we stand now, or what we have achieved so far and, and what are the prospects for the future. And uh, I had the pleasure to announce that we will continue working in this area um, and that we, we have launched a call uh, for a more structural approach uh, of our support in these uh, uh, domains of, of intervention, notably um, media education um, and strengthening of the media in the fight against disinformation and uh, hate speech. Philip Van Damme leaves Cameroon in the days ahead after having a sense of fulfillment of helping Cameroon fight against hate speech and misinformation, two key canker worms which dominate the global communication environment today, which Cameroon, represented by Minister René Manuel Sadi, denounces vehemently. The United Kingdom and Cameroon are united in the fight against terrorism. The British Minister for the Armed Forces gave the reassurance in Yaoundé today after talks with the Minister Delegate to the Minister of External Relations in charge of cooperation with the Commonwealth. Felix Mbayou also received the new Algerian ambassador designated to Cameroon and other delegations. Charles Ebune once more. Over the past few years, the United Kingdom and Cameroon are jointly involved in the fight against terrorism, especially Boko Haram in the far north region of the country. And to strengthen the bond of military cooperation between Yaoundé and London, the British Minister of State for the Armed Forces enters the Ministry of External Relations today. This is my second visit to Cameroon. Uh, and it's great to be here and to meet our friends in the Cameroonian government again. Um, there's so much that the UK and Cameroon shares in terms of the way that we approach the security challenges in this part of Africa. James Happy and the Minister Delegate to the Minister of External Relations in charge of cooperation with the Commonwealth, Felix Mbayou, reviewed the essential of the military areas of cooperation between Cameroon and the United Kingdom. We're very proud of our long-standing commitment to um, work with the Cameroonian Armed Forces in the Lake Chad Basin. We'll continue to do so, and we'll continue to listen to our friends here in Yonde to make sure that what we're doing in this part of the world continues to meet the requirement and continues to help. On the heels of the British Minister of State for the Armed Forces came the new ambassador designate of Algeria to Cameroon, Bukmachi Abdella is a seasoned diplomat who comes to strengthen areas of cooperation, especially education and transport between Yaoundé and RJs. And just after the Algerian diplomat came a senior World Bank official who equally came to present his letters of introduction to the Cameroonian diplomatic establishment. Sheikh Fantamadi Kante is the new director of the World Bank Operations in Cameroon. 
Coffee stakeholders in Cameroon have proposed strategies to revive the sector and guarantee quality coffee beans. They presented their ideas to the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Bayrobe, during the second steering committee meeting of the support project for the revival of the coffee subsector dubbed PAF Cafe organized in Yaoundé. Lenis Nane Epote reports that the Minister of Agriculture equally received in audience the Ambassador of Russia to Cameroon, His Excellency Anatoly Bashkin. Cameroon coffee's production capacity today stands at 35,000 ton per annum, but stakeholders anticipate it could be better. Topping up to 125,000 ton per annum is the ambition if there could be remedy to high cost of fertilizers and other farm products which producers see as some of the reasons for the low production and quality of coffee beans. Production was expensive while the prices were very low. Farmers usually have a limited amount of uh, insecticides to treat the the plants. The support project for the revival of the coffee subsector is therefore out to assist farmers increase their output. We count on the national consumption. This is our first pillar to revamp the uh, coffee subsector. Presently, the prices of a kilogram of coffee fluctuates between 400 to 600 francs CFA, creating space for producers in the international market, experts say, who help solve the problem of price drop. Our coffee has a good quality abroad and we can reconquer new market by working on the quality of the coffee. The Minister of Agriculture later received in audience the Ambassador of Russia to Cameroon, His Excellency Anatoly Baskin, where he reassures the Minister of Russia's collaboration and expertise to boost Cameroon's agricultural sector. Inhabitants of the Far North region have been complaining of an unprecedented increase in the price of cereals in the local markets. A 100-kilogram bag of maize now sells at 40,000 CFA francs, up from 25,000 CFA francs, leaving consumers perplexed. Our Far North regional correspondent, Ayujan Ashu, has been probing into reasons surrounding the price hike and has the following report. Corn, sorghum, and millet, which constitute the basic staple of most households in the far north region, are not only scarce in the local markets, but are also quite expensive for an average family. Corn is our main food. This time, the price hike has disturbed us, especially at, uh, in our various houses. We used to cook fufu every, at least twice or three times a week, but this time, with the price hike, that thing has affected us in the house seriously. Wholesalers attribute the prevailing price of a 100 kilogram bag of any of these cereals at over 40,000 francs to a number of reasons. Before, those varieties of millet used to be 16 or 17,000. This is due to the lack of rains and the fact that so many bags are transported to Nigeria and Chad. Added to this is the high demand by humanitarian bodies catering for refugees, IDPs and host communities, plus the purchase of cereals as a raw material by some breweries. Worse still, harvests have been generally very poor due to low rainfall, devastation of farms by floods and the invasion of cereal fields by grain-eating beds. Hence, some households have adopted alternatives in the face of the unprecedented increase in the prices of cereals in the far north region. And in the face of the increase in the price of cereals in the far north region, attention is now turned to the Cameroon Cereal Office, whose mission is to regulate the sector. In the meantime, some households have resorted to alternative meals, as Sylvester Temkin tells us. From the Banks Avenue to the stretch leading up to the food market in Marwa, have been transformed into a makeshift market for tubers. These food items are what some families have resorted to since they cannot afford money for cereals. Cereals is very expensive. It's not easy to feed my family with a cereal. That is why I chose to buy potatoes and cassava. For some time now, I haven't tasted anything cereal because it is too expensive. I am into cassava, cocoa yams, yams, spaghetti and other meals. 
Meanwhile, those who must consume corn or millet try to adapt to the situation. We are used to millet as our staple food. With the family in the house and given that millet is now expensive, I go for a little quantity and then mix it with tubers. As a short-term measure, the Cameroon Cereal Office has stepped in. The National Series Board, in line with its mission to regulate prices of cereals, had to do something to bring down the high prices to an affordable price to avoid speculation in the market. However, given the high demand, most inhabitants of the far north region rather impatiently wait for the harvest season. You're watching the 7.30 News live in Studio 5. The National Observatory on Climate Change has warned that heavy rains and floods this year may have devastating effects on agriculture, energy and the construction industry. The institution is advising the population to stick to weather forecasts before engaging on any activity or face the consequences, as you tell us, Juliana Befollow. It is high time for Cameroonians to arm wrestle with heavy downpours, flooding, landslides, amongst others, an indication that Cameroon is not left out from the global situation of climate change. In the agricultural sector, experts say the seasonal instability affects farmers in various ways. It affects uh, the planting period, harvesting period, and uh, the way they, they treat their farms. It leads to the proliferation of uh, diseases. The excess downpours of the season equally have great impact on the construction sector. The, you, you find the contractors uh, suspend the work for some time due to heavy rains, especially unexpected because they do their planning at the time they notice what is happening is not what they expected. The energy sector too suffers enormously during the rainy season. That is why you see disruption, energy cuts, you see, uh, you see at times they are forced to supply one quarter while the other is in darkness because the supply is not enough. However, according to the National Observatory on Climate Change, it is important to bear in mind that some of these unfavorable situations will go a long way till the end of the rains. The last act of a series on violent waves, high tides and erosion in Kribi explores possible solutions to either reduce or stop the phenomenon. Environmentalists propose the construction of a coastal dike while administrative officials want a temporary ban on swimming to protect civilians and tourists from pounding waves. Cyril Noazeke has been investigating what the government and its partners are proposing as immediate, short and long-term solutions to the devastating effects of sea waves. The upcoming days in Kribi, according to climatologists, are predictable. The weather condition is likely to affect temperatures at sea. The phenomenon that happened like uh, two days or three days back mm -hmm. yes it's something that is likely to happen again like in in four days to come it's something that can happen again environmentalists hold that such phenomenon is not new the causes are well known elevation <coughs> in la temperature the rise in temperature as natural factor and the digging of sun as human factor, plus the construction of houses along the shores, could be blamed. To contain such happenings, weather observers have proposed a good number of measures to be taken. To avoid swimming that period of time is not even good for that period of time because it's accompanied with a lot of speed and wind. It's not even good to be along the seashore because the wave, the, the, the sand there is not a good sand for even for construction. But if we could do something to accompany people along, we can use um, temporal materials like uh, we can use like something like steel. If these measures are respected, the natural phenomenon could be controlled. Few weeks to school resumption, most vendors of second-hand textbooks are finding strategies to meet the demand of their clients. Lower Bate Eya made a tour of some major streets in the nation's capital and now reports on the tips and tricks to attract customers and how they make profit. Welcome to Zogby Roundabout in Yawunde. This is the nature of business out here. Survival of the fittest is the game of the day. 
because we are very many of us on this line. So because of the other stores, the library selling apart uh, from the other way of the road is very difficult for us. Most vendors of second-hand textbooks hustle and bustle to hold clients to their stands. When we are seated, we have some let's say friends that stand up and when you see a client coming from afar you stand and approach the client ask questions if the client needs some readers or not that's how we proceed every day where you see me sitting like this is to attract customers from left and right according to this vendor in order to make ends meet a day wisdom and techniques are essential. To sell the readers that are turned, they used to put gum Unlike others, though the business gets tough, this vendor says he is able to make at least close to 25,000 CFE francs a day. I have been in this business for over 33 years. I am a big gum. People come to me, I don't go to them. Whether new or old books, these parents say the information within is what matters. I prefer buying second-hand textbooks because they are cheap. Less than two weeks to back to school, most vendors in the nation's capital say, despite the ups and downs, they are sure to go back home with a little cash. Some women impacting lives in their communities have been acquiring more leadership skills and updating knowledge on how to be positive influencers. The ARENA Leadership Conference intends to promote women excelling in leadership from the 10 regions of Cameroon to motivate younger ones to be positive influencers. Emanuela Vemnui has more. She has taken the lead, galvanizing fellow folk to be at their best as they push for more female leaders of influence. It is the second leadership arena conference in Yaoundé. It's a gathering for women of influence. And when we talk about influence, we're talking about women who are ready to impact and change lives. Building capacities of women leaders women in leadership positions and young girls who are aspiring to be leaders. Their inborn talents have been nursed to successful ventures. Most of them shoot for the stars and this training puts them face to face with models in female leadership, a plus to capitalize on. When you begin to manage thoughts and feelings the right way, then you would trigger the results. And it is a constant challenge. Ten leadership skills and four leadership styles constitute discussions at the second leadership arena conference championed by the Berla Meridian Group. To gain leadership skills that will enable me to be an asset in other people's lives. Knowledge acquired is expected to be transmitted to other women for more positive influence and rebirth of other female leaders in Cameroon. Close to about 30 women have died in acts of violence since January this year as femicide rises in an alarming rate in Cameroon. Officials in the Ministry of Women's Empowerment and the Family say they are bent on eradicating the ill which undermines fundamental human rights. What are the different types of femicide and how can they be prevented? Faith Nguang has been finding out from social scientists and now reports. It starts with a misunderstanding. A quarrel, a fight, and it ends six feet deep. Women, most often victims, don't get a chance to tell the story. Those who nevertheless manage to brave the storm share the miracle trick. We prayed a lot. We asked our God how to do, and God give us Holy Ghost Spirit. I tell young girls today to persevere. I have been married since 1966. My husband brought another wife and maltreated me because I wasn't giving birth to her. But I am still there to date. The resurgent phenomenon, which hastens the journey of women to the country of Uncle Sam, has an identity. Femicide. And worse, it has got wings. The first one is intimate feminicide the second is non-intimate feminicide the third type, type is crime of honor and the fourth type is dowry crime to avoid more women passing away too soon society should step up the plate to be a man is natural but masculinity is a social construction psychological construction or uh, uh, political construction 
And so, when a man wants to affirm his masculinity, it can be exaggerated and leads to uh, crime. The government has the weapon pointed at the ear. The plea of June 18 speaks volumes. There are many provisions to punish the different forms of violence based on gender. It is a plea that UNFPA has started to make. We must have it without delay. One more stain of a woman's blood. The government says no. It's time to act. With barely one week to the close of the annual revision exercise of voter registers for 2023, Elections Cameroon has launched a digital campaign to sensitize those who have not yet registered to do so. ELECAM is using mascots to sensitize their peers on social media to register before the August 31st deadline. Ebniza Akanga tells us more. <laughs> To reach the highest number of persons of voting age who have not yet registered in voter registers, Elections Cameroon has launched a digital campaign to sensitize them to register before the end of the annual revision exercise on August 31, 2023. Elecam is using two mascots who represent the youth, women and girls to reach those who have not yet registered. We deploy ourselves through content sketches, publications, and hashtag so that everyone should know that it is a duty of all to register in voter registers. I represent the youth, especially young girls. Through the social media, I sensitize them to register in voter registers. The mascots say the digital campaign is having an impact given the number of likes they are receiving in their social media pages. The digital campaign was launched on August 23, one week before the close of the annual revision exercise of voter registers for 2023. Sundays have been observed to be permanently reserved for debates on most uh, TV uh, television channels. Unfortunately, organs in Cameroon in the last couple of years, most Cameroonians find the media appointment educative, especially in understanding the day-to-day -day running of state affairs, thought others find them uh, co conflictual and propagandist. But the question of media ethics and the duration of some such programs is what our reporter Larry's Nana Epot has been investigating among media professionals. It's fast becoming a new trend on Sundays where local media entertain debate programs that last for four to five hours with panelists who are sometimes activists, politicians and men and women from all works of life. Debate topics go up to sometimes five, with some giving an impression of scores settling. These programs have drifted to weekly press reviews to infotainment. When you just do entertainment, you are no more in the domain of journalism. When journalists do, doesn't master the domain, they, they fall in the domain of uh, just animation and things like that. It's a kind of punchline and it's not uh, to teach, to learn something, no. Uh, television is an entertainment. Media experts say it is a trend which comes to keep viewers glued to a program. If you are able to keep audiences for your channel mean that these audiences uh, doesn't go for the other channels. However, the choices of panelists and the subject matter professionals see should be reviewed with the presenter having full control of his or her set. Those people behave in studio as if they were in the downtown there. And the journalist doesn't succeed to manage uh, the way of the program. Giving lifetime value to these programs should be the ultimate concern of media personalities so as to keep viewers educated, informed and entertained. A pontifical requiem mass has been celebrated at the Yaoundé Our Lady of Victory Cathedral to pray for the repose of the soul of the late matriarch Kamsu Elise, mother of Honorable Abe Quincho, who died last March at the age of 96. The solemn event was attended by parliamentarians, members of government, dignitaries and family members. As you tell us, Doris Batitato Ikwe. 
The bulk of Christians and the clergy of the Yaoundé Ecclesiastical Province converged on the Our Lady of Victory Cathedral to pray for the repose of the soul of the late matriarch Kamsu Elise, mother of Honorable Albert Quinche. Among them, distinguished personalities of diverse ranks, including members of parliament and government, celebrating the pontifical requiem mass, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé, His Grace Jean Barga likened the departed who was a fervent catholic to the biblical proverbs 31 virtuous woman who single-handedly worked hard to bring up her six sons as a widow for 51 years just like the prophetess anna who served in the temple daily matriarch kamsu elise was described by the man of god as an example of a devoted and faithful christian whose generosity to society was remarkable. Christians were admonished to emulate such an exemplary character. The Pontifical Requiem Mass officially sets the pace for the funeral of the matriarch scheduled for Banjun on Saturday. Her remains will be coffined at the Yaoundé General Hospital morgue this Friday at 10 a.m. Nine-time champions Kenya are presently facing three-time winners Egypt in the final of the 21st edition of the Women's African Volleyball Championship. Both teams are battling hard to increase their continental crowns. Let's get latest updates uh, from the Yaoundé Multipurpose Sports Complex with Romeo Kenya. Hello, Romeo. Good evening. Uh, Kenya champions for the tenth time in terms of uh, women's volleyball on the continent since 1991 when they won their first coveted trophy the kenyans have imposed hegemony again since 2015 when they played the last final against uh, you know uh, are moving on to lose three consecutive finals against cameroon yeah again the mount the podium again and then you can see the ceremony is ongoing where special distinctions are handed to the various delegations of the fact to note that uh, this year there were 12 teams that took part for the very first time in this competition and so the uh, ceremony is currently presided over by the minister of sport and physical education uh, professor narcissa mwele kombi and so at the end where kenya won this uh, set against um, uh, uh, Egypt has three sets to nothing against uh, Egypt. They have also picked qualification for the Olympic Games next year in Paris, France. But it is worth noting that Cameroon too joins uh, Egypt and uh, Kenya to qualify for the World Championship that are programmed for 2025 after they finish uh, third uh, winning uh, Rwanda three sets to one. So those are the latest developments here. Just to mention again that uh, Kenya are back again at top the continental stage as champions of uh, the volleyball women across the African continent. For one week, we've been serving you the latest development. Uh, Benda Ekuda, myself, Romeo Kenyi, signing off. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Romeo Kenyi. All is well that went out.